And so I ended up, Ole got me booked in uh, uh, Mid-South. Mm -hmm. And that's where I did really well for a period of about six months. I went down there and got a good break with, uh, with Bill Watts, uh, with DiBiase and Duggan. And, the Rat uh, Pack. Yeah, the Rat Pack. And uh, Junkyard Dog was on fire. Every place we went sold out, you know, and I did really well there. You know, I, uh, you know, geez, a lot of, lot of long traveling, 3,500 miles a week sometimes. Ooh. But I was making 25, three grand a week. Wow. Yeah. Money. In 1982, that was a lot of money. Yep, a lot of money. Yeah. Was that preferable to you than Georgia, the time you spent in mid, I'm, I get them confused, mid-south? Um, some people hated Watts, some people loved Watts, but they all felt they learned a lot from Watts. Learned a lot from Watts, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but Watts, Watts, had, uh, Watts had an attitude that uh, he, had, he was kind of a bully to a lot of guys, but he was never to me. And back then you had this mentality, you take care of each other, you know. Uh, the kayfabe was strong. You never are seen in a bar together. You never seen traveling together. You never seen partying together at all. And if you were, your job was at risk. And but Watts had this thing. He goes, I don't care if you guys go out and party and get drunk every night. Because you ever get in a fight in a bar and you lose, you're fired. And he meant it. And uh, so, you know, I, I was a wild guy and I always could take care of myself. And I got in a lot of fights in bars, you know, and, and Watts kind of liked that, you know. And uh, one night we're, we were wrestling in Monroe, Louisiana, and Jim Duggan and I were uh, the main event, and uh, he left the ring before me. All the lights come on in the building, and I'm still in the ring, and I looked around, and Jim Duggan's fighting with three guys. And the smallest one, they're all his size. Wow. You know, Duggan was 290 then, yeah. you know? And uh, so I look around, and Duggan's fighting with these three guys that are his size. I didn't have a problem with that, you know. I jumped right down there, and I jumped right into the mix of it. And uh, I knocked this guy down, and I put the boots to him, and, uh, you know, his, his terrible thing happened, you know. I knocked this guy out. I kicked him in the head, and, and he lost his eye. I knocked him out, and he lost his eye. But I didn't know that at the time, you know. And I went back to the dressing room, and Bill Watts came in, and you would have thought I just was the, uh, got the key to the city. Really? You know? Bill Watts come in and grabbed me and told everyone there, see this? This is how you do it. This is how you take care of things. This man right here is a man. He, you see how he jumped in and went duck? And I just, you know, I was like, oh, that's me. Duggan come in and thanks, man. Thanks, man, man. You got my back. Anytime I got your back too, man. I felt great, you know. The guy, I knew I knocked the guy out, you know. And uh, um, but the ambulance came and he lost his eye. And, uh, you know, I got to live with that. But, but he didn't have any place getting involved with professional wrestlers in the middle of an event. Yeah. But I, what was my part in it? I didn't have to kick him when he was down. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to do that. I was wrong. He was already down and out. He was down. Oh. Okay. He was down. I started kicking him. And I had, one of my kicks caught, caught him in the side of the head. You know, I, what if I would have killed him? You know? Yeah. But anyway, so the lawsuits came down. And. I had ended up going to, uh, back to Atlanta and then went back to Oregon. So all these lawsuits came down and on it, and Duggan was still there. Duggan and Watts. Watts lost his license in, uh, in, Louis in Monroe, Louisiana for a year. Oh, wow. Cost a bunch of money. Cost Duggan $30,000. So all of a sudden, I'm the bad guy. Yep. Watts hated me. When you were the hero. Duggan hated me. And... Uh, what what did I do? What did I do? You know? But to this day, Duggan thinks that I messed his life up, you know. You know? That's you know what? some of the big years he had at the thirty thousand dollars. He wouldn't speak to me for five, six years. Wow. And then when later on when we were in WWF together, uh you know, we never hung together. We used to ride together all the time mm -hmm. for months. And uh, we'd be cordial with each other. And he said, hey, Matt, I know, I know. And I told him, I said, listen, Jim, that night I was your best friend. And we w rode home that night and we talked. He talked. To, he told me, I got your back the same way, man. Anything like that, I mean, you got, uh, I'm there for you. I said, I know that, Jim. I know that, Jim. And then it went from that to him hating me. 
And I reminded him of that night riding back and everything he said. And I reminded him of how Bill Watts put me on a pedestal. And then all of a sudden, I'm, you know, I'm Satan himself, you know. Did, he, did he remember that part oh, of the yeah. night? Oh, he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Interesting. But still, still, whatever has happened in his career, why he has to go to the WWE and do jobs on TV nowadays, you know, and, um, you, know, we, you know, why do I got to work nowadays? You know, I mean, I didn't handle my, my finances right. I sure in the heck wouldn't be getting in the ring now at 52 years old if I would have done things right, made all the right decisions. You know, but I don't hold nobody, I don't blame anybody for that. It's my own fault. I made my own decisions. Jim Duggan, I believe Jim Duggan wants to think it's my fault that for a big part of his life, the things that he's done wrong. You know, I don't know because he, we got a problem. He's got a problem with me and I got a problem with him too because, you know, some of the things he's pulled, <laughs> up, pulled with me yeah. not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live.